Alright guys and welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to be taking a look at a new quadcopter. It's called the Aurora RC X-Man and this was provided to me by Banggood. So we're going to go ahead and take a little quick overview uh, because after this video I'm going to start preparing them to take them out for flights. So as we can tell here they give us this weird battery strap which is like basically kind of for micros but it's a little bit longer. So that's something there. They do give us an anti-slip uh, pad right there to stick on the quad. And we have an extra wire here for something. Don't know what it is for just yet. They do provide us with the 5152 Gemfan Flash uh, two sets of propellers from the Gemfan 51, uh, what is this, 53 or something? 5152. So they're, they're 5.1 inch props. So this thing could take 5.1 inch props. It is a 5 inch quadcopter. And the kind of style and the feel of it here, this one right here, it kind of reminds me of the old uh, B fight because it's also pretty cheap. And they're using the DYS 2205-2550KV motors. So in theory, it is also a stretch X, as you can tell right here, see? So this is not a true X, this is a stretch X. It's kind of somewhat for racing or just having fun. Uh, they do have, I think this is kind of like the Eosheen, uh, what is it called? The Eosheen camera here. This might be a CMOS, not a CCD camera. We'll know soon enough. I'll probably take it apart and test it. We're rocking a 4-in-1 ESC. And the 4-in-1 ESC here, we do also have some LEDs in the back. Now, the 4-in-1 ESC here seems like it's um, the Typhoon rebranded, possibly. That's what it seems like. And as you can tell here, the flight controller here has a pretty massive little square right there. And that's going to be the buzzer right there. And we do also have the LEDs. So overall, the execution looks very nice and very clean. They've soldered the wires on the bottom here. And it seems like it's, it's a pretty damn good job, actually. Uh, they do a very well job here. The VTX is using a 5.8 gigahertz, obviously, 48 channel uh, VTX which does have shielding on board. I don't know if it's going to have, uh, what is it, a uh, smart port, but I don't think it does actually. So we're going to have to take it apart and take a look at this right now. Uh, overall, so far it's looking good. It comes in different flavors. You, you get plug and play and uh, you also get FR Sky and I believe Fly Sky also, but this one is the FR Sky version. Let's quickly take a look at what else it comes with before we jump into the specs of this or the inside part. So they do provide us with an antenna. So these are pretty good antennas, kind of. Well, at least the ones I've used weren't that great. That's really it. That's all that comes with it. Just the props, some of those, and this thing here. So let's go ahead and start taking this guy apart and taking a look at what we could find inside. All right, guys. So let's go ahead and take this bad boy apart. You don't you don't get much camera protection, as I can tell right now. So we're going to see how all this plays out here. See the alignment of the frame. See the ease of access if we're going to have to modify it in the field if there was any issue with it and uh there we go it's using an f4 processor i believe so this is on pretty tight actually am i missing a screw no that's crazy this is crazy it's like it's super glued or something all right so that thing was on insanely uh hard actually the, the i don't know how good the clearance is but that thing was just really on super bad so let's just check this out so looking at this i don't think it has smart port as i believe at the current moment of time from looking at it so let's just go ahead and see the stack here all right guys so taking this guy apart was a little bit actually challenging it was pretty well put to inside so i don't know how hard it's going to be to put this all back together once we check it out but yeah, we'll, we'll, get, we'll check that out in a little bit. So as you can tell here, it's using an MMX port for the VTX, which is very nice to see on the VTX. This will increase its longevity since uh, you're pulling out. And then we do have a built-in OSD kind of control for the camera here. So I'm guessing it's a CMOS. It's one of those um, Chinese no-name ones. So let's just unplug this. So, so far, so good. It seems like we're going to have a pretty good field of view. We'll check that out in the field once we go. And uh, let's take a look at the VTX here. So it's called the Sakura VTX. So it is a stackable VTX. I really like stackable VTXs. And it, there's really nothing else showing up here. So let's just go ahead and remove these and take a look at what we have below it. So the flight controller is not an all-in-one flight controller, but it just has a bunch of features on board from just looking at it through the quad, like through the stack. And now we're going to actually take a closer look at it and see what we find here. So <clears throat> let's see. The VTX I think is to a maximum of 600 milliwatts if I remember correctly. Yeah. All right. So let's just take a look here. This is what we want to see. Yeah. So we do have smart port or tramp protocol. I don't know what it's using, but one thing for sure is you're going to be able to control the OSD through the uh, through the Betaflight OSD. That's for sure right there. So the color coding is kind of retarded a little bit, as you could tell here. 
we have the TX pad or RX, sorry, RX, which is going to be the white wire right there, which will control this VTX's channels and power possibly. And uh, down here we have a the video or is this ground? This is kind of very. No, this is ground. Okay, so the red wire here is ground. So it's go taking it's going to ground and it's giving the flight controller here uh, the the ability to control this VTX. So let's just unplug this guy right now. And then here, what do we have here? This is a little bit tricky here. So I think, let's just see, what do we have? We have video, ground, and DC in. Okay, so this is taking that battery voltage through this connector. And at the same time, this connector is also providing another two separate connectors here. They look like two actually. So as you can tell here, the bottom is for the camera and the top one here is for the VTX. So this is the uh, VCC. So it's getting powered. Uh, the VTX is getting powered directly from the battery power here. Uh, through these wires and it's also providing it the video feed and the ground here so it passes through the osd and it gives it to the uh camera through here so that's okay that's good to see and if we take a closer look let's just actually unplug this guy all right so if we take a look at the flight controller here it seems pretty basic pretty cool i guess uh i still is it is it connect oh no, it's not so as you can tell here it's connected to the esc via wires and um, let's just let's just leave that there. I don't want to mess with that right now, sure. right? And we do have the o the LEDs right here, so that's pretty cool. They have that all set up for you right there. That's pretty nice. So let's just go ahead and undo this because I really want to take a look at the ESC because this is also very bad. Look how long this wire is. That's not very good. That could introduce a lot of noise into the uh, quad, which we really don't want um, at all, actually. So I'm really curious how this one's going to perform and if it's going to have noise on board or not. So let's just unplug this guy here. Okay. So the standoffs are a bit tight, but that's fine. We'll just remove the whole thing then. So that's good. Usually I recommend when you buy a pre-built quad like this is always double check the standoffs. Cause I guess sometimes the, uh, the employees get kind of lazy. And they just don't tighten everything all the way down. Oh, wow. This is really tight. There we go. I don't want to mess up the orientation. Okay. So, yeah. Yeah, I was right. This is a, this is a Typhoon. This is a pretty noisy 4-in-1 ESC. Um, I don't know how well it's going to perform on this build here. But this is exactly from AirBot. This is this is their first version. This is a BLHoli S ESC, if I remember correctly. And I'm pretty sure I do. Yeah, the filtration is very minimal. Let's actually take a look at it since we can. <clears throat> so, yeah, I, I really always try to avoid this one, but we'll see how well this plays out. Maybe because these motors feel very light and I think it's going to be a pretty efficient quad. It might come up to like four to five minutes of flight time if you're cruising, maybe. But we'll just check that out later on. So it's going to be difficult to show you. So it does have current sensor on the uh, ESC. It's going to be very hard to see because I don't want to unplug the motors now. Filtration is absolutely minimal, as you can tell right there. And um, yeah, it's it's a Typhoon rebranded ESC. Uh, it's kind of like the Tico S ESC, which is the one that like I always tell everyone to try to avoid. And it's also the considered, I think, the Yashin Rev 35 or Real ACC Rev 35 ESC or something like that. Uh, they're all from Typhoon. Not Typhoon, sorry, Airbot. And Airbot uh, just has, um, this was not a very good model. Neither was their first BL Heli 32 ESC. Uh, that one just didn't work. And the filtration was very minimal on that. And I really didn't, um, I don't know, I wasn't really into it. So let's just take a look at the flight controller here now. <clears throat> Overall, the execution is absolutely clean. Uh, these motors seem like they were just in stock and they wanted to get rid of them. And uh, so, you know, companies go out and buy out these manufacturers, you know, because these are very old motors, actually. I've never seen them before. I've never even heard of them before, to be honest. It's called Race Edition 2205 from DYS. One of the bearings is bad so far. I could totally hear it right there. Um, we'll see how that will affect the overall flight with this ESC. So the flight controller is pretty nice. I mean, it's a, I would say, you know, a branded Aurora RC. I don't know what manufacturer makes this for them. But it just seems pretty basic. It's it's good that it has a buzzer on board. Um, you have a SD card expansion right there. I think it is using the F4. Actually, I think it's an F3 processor, to be honest. Let's just double check this. This looks like an F3 processor here. So, let's see. Yeah, it's actually using an Omnibus F3 flight controller. So, this is kind of a little bit outdated here. Yeah, it's, it's a bunch of things that... 
are probably just you just want to get rid of and then they put it into one package and they try to sell it for super cheap which is it's 180 bucks um but i'm curious if we could build something i'm pretty i'm pretty i built 180 dollar quads before and uh, we'll see how well this will perform maybe it could perform as good or even better but um it's going to be pretty interesting here so it's using an f3 processor with betaflight osd and um, we do have the boot button there. I mean, overall, it's all pimped out. You know, you got your LEDs, you got your 41 ESC. And the, the overall execution and the build quality is very nice from looking at it here. It was very well thought out. But, um, you know, th that's just one thing. The, the real thing is is how, it's, how is it going to fly? So we, w we really want to see that. That's the most important thing always, really. All right, guys. So overall, I mean, you know, the ESCs are not the greatest. The flight controller is not the latest. And the VTX is just a VTX. I've never really cared much about VTXs. They usually all just work just fine. Never had real issues. The $12 VTX to $50 VTX, they all work the same. Well, I mean, not the same, but you know what I mean. At least for my type of flying, that doesn't really matter. So overall, I mean, the execution is nice. But so far, it's, you know, the, the, the bad bearing here on one of the motors, as you could hear it right there. See if I spin this one. You can't hear anything, but if I spin here, let me see if I can put it by the mic. Uh, it's gonna be gone, but the noise cancellation. So yeah, you, it's it's very noticeable. I don't know if you guys could hear that. That's one thing I currently don't like. The flight controller is one that I really don't like. The, fl the I mean the ESC. The flight controller is a bit outdated. Um, so you're not going to be able to play with much filters for most of the noise that are probably going to be generated. Now, this is all theories. This is just me guessing. It's not, it could be completely untrue, but we're going to have to build it. I mean, build it. We're going to have to set it up and go take it out for a flight and then seeing how well this performs. Overall, I mean, it's a budget, you know, quadcopter. And I think, you know, you can get a diatone right now for the same price if you use the coupon code. Uh, I'll leave the link to the coupon code down below and get it for like 180 bucks. Diatone 2018 though, not the latest, latest one, but the uh, the older one, a little bit older one, which I really love that one to be honest. I have that one. Um, I don't have the newer ones. I built the newer frame. It was pretty good, but the thing is the, the aluminum on it is absolutely crap uh, on the newer latest Diatone frames. But um, overall, you know, this seems pretty good. Seems a bit of a headache in the field if you had to take it apart. As you can tell here, I'm trying to put it back together. Uh, that's one thing that's that's huge. It's very big, you know, uh, especially for me when I'm going to go out flying and, you know, it's just pissing me off and I need to kind of modify something or take it apart. Sometimes I just give up. I just say, you know, what? I have other quads to fly. I'm just going to go fly those. I'm not even going to put up with it. But, um, you know, this is kind of. It's, or maybe you have like 20 minutes to fly. Next thing you know, you have to take it apart. And taking it apart will eventually take you like 40 minutes to take it apart and put it back together. Make sure we don't hit any of these. And then this guy is a little bit annoying here. And let's take these guys here so we don't Cause I have a bad habit. So let's see how well it fits together. Because when I took this thing apart, holy crap, it was so hard. Okay, so the I give it like a out of ten for you know frame alignment and ease of access to modify in the field. I would give it like a six. It's okay. I've seen a lot worse. It's not bad, but it's so packed inside. It's just a little bit too much here. And um, overall, I mean, it seems cheap. I mean, that's what that's what all it is. It should be a little bit cheaper, to be honest. I think, in my opinion, I think it would be like around one hundred fifty bucks, and then you can't really complain. I mean, I wouldn't complain. I'd go take it out, fly it, see if it has noise, add a low ASR capacitor, see how well I could tune it out and perform it, uh, perfect it as much as possible. And then next thing you know, you got yourself a little nice cheap winner as a backup quad. If you don't have time to build one, or just for some reason you're incapable to build one just for medical reasons, or you just, you know, you don't have the equipment to test, to build one, to be honest. So overall, I mean, the overall execution, like I said, it's nice. It's very nice build. The frame alignment is kind of wacky. Uh, the components are a little bit outdated or quite a bit outdated to be honest, but that doesn't mean it's not going to fly good. And the e 41 ESC is susceptible to a lot of noise, especially adding such a long ass power cable here. I would highly recommend you shorten this out to at least to here. Uh, this can, it just makes it more susceptible to noise here. And, um, overall, that's all I could really say right now. Right now I'm just going to prepare all the quads that I have to go fly them, uh, from this one to the new frog light six inch that we just built 
and um, this one's gonna be pretty damn insane. We're gonna actually we'll compare these two together for some reason. This one's a little bit more expensive, but it's gonna be pretty fun. I, this was the the previous build video. So overall, I mean, you know, it, it's it looks okay. I don't like stretch X frames, so we'll see what we're gonna do with this one. Maybe give it away on Patreon, and um, after I test it and everything. So overall, it looks pretty good that's all i can really say i can't say anything else right now the escs like i said before uh they're you know not the most reliable well not they can be reliable i've never had it blow up on me but i mean it's not the it's pretty noisy flight controller it's an f3 flight controller uh vtx is just an okay vtx you have beta flight osd to, to control it uh motors they seem pretty good i mean i would have gave the motors an okay thing if one of them was you didn't have a bad bearing here i could totally hear that so yeah just one with a bad bearing here they're pretty smooth um yeah that's pretty much it the gap is not the the smallest gap so we'll see how well this performs i think it's going to be a pretty efficient quad but not with these um propellers i'm gonna try these propellers but i'm also gonna put like some 50 45 king kongs and some 50 46 dow uh prop cyclones and seeing how well it performs on those also i think i think the dow might be good or the king kong this might be better because it just has a smaller pitch and you have a higher kv thus giving you more um more efficiency more than anything because it's a higher kv here and um, I think that's it, guys. So that's going to conclude it for this video, guys. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. The flight footage will be upcoming. I'm taking them out tomorrow morning. All of the quads. We're going to go ahead and test them out and uh, do maybe, maybe some kind of a vlog kind of style of how everything is going in the field with me if I have to do anything. If you guys are interested in that, let me know down in the comment section. But so far, um, it seems... I don't know. You, you decide for yourself. So, um, so far, we're going to go ahead and test it out. It seems pretty well built. Components are pretty decent. And um, we just I just don't want to judge it just yet before flying. It could be the best thing on the planet. I never know. So we'll see how well that works out. And I really hope you guys enjoyed it. And please consider joining my Patreon. Really support this channel. You could doing awesome things like this. I don't have many Patreons. So, you know, your, your possibility of winning is very great. And uh, you also get some other crazy cool stuff. You can go ahead and check out the Patreon. And um, that's it, guys. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. And I will see you next time. See you guys. Take care.